All right, let's play Doc Hockey. I'm going to try to do an instructive game here. So you have a full deck of cards, and the full deck includes jokers. There should be two jokers. One of them there is close to the back. So you need 54 cards to play the game. And you shuffle, and then you're going to sort the cards into two piles. You make one pile of 32 and another pile of 22. So let's do that now. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. And you can even, just to double check to make sure that I have exactly 32 cards here, I'll count this pile. There should be 22. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is the draw pile, this pile of 22. I will only use this for special occasions, let's say. It only comes up once in a while, sometimes in the game. And uh, this pile here will be, you can call it the play pile, the timer pile. Um, this gets us through the period. A period is 32 cards. And so uh, it's played out in eight sequences of four cards. Um, most of the game is 90 to 90 percent of it 90 to 99 percent of it sorry so you know thereabouts so anyway the first card that you draw is to determine whether the visiting team has the puck or the home team has the puck because it's a black card the visiting team has the puck first you look at this card here you're looking under the assist column and the queen, it says K. Lofman. These are WHL cards from 1963. I am not too familiar with, um, you know, uh, most of the roster, I guess. So there are a number of players in this roster that I'm just not familiar with. So I might butcher some of these names, sorry if so. But Lofman here has the puck. And I turn over another card. This card is a four. I'm looking at Lofman's ability to play the puck. It says A and then 4 to 10, meaning on an ace, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10, he can play the puck successfully. On a 2 or a 3, he would misplay the puck. And if a face card, a jack, queen, or king comes up, what I would have to do then is look to the other team's defense to see whether or not Lofman is able to make a play. This is a 4. Lofman is able to maneuver the puck to someone in scoring position. I turn over another card to see who in scoring position has the puck. That's a seven. So Lofman here, basically, you're looking at an end-to-end -end individual effort for him, and he can score on an ace or an eight to ten. So when I turn over the next card, if it's an ace, eight, nine, or ten, Lofman has scored. If it is uh, a two, three, four, five, six, or seven, he has not scored. And if it is a face card, I'm going to look at the opposition net minding to see whether or not uh, the Stampeders, in this case, have surrendered a goal. So I look, and it is a five, which means Lofman has been unable to score. One, two, three, four cards have been played. It's uh, one-eighth of the period. Two and a half minutes, if you like, have gone by in the period. And so far, it is scoreless. The next sequence, again, it's a black card. So again, black is visitor. The Portland Buckaroos have possession. This time it's Team McCarthy. I'm not sure if it's Tom, Tim, Taylor, uh, Timmy, but he has the puck. And uh, so I turn over another card, and this is an eight. The eight falls in the window of the ace or six to 10. It falls in the six to 10 window here. So he will be able to play the puck successfully to someone in scoring position. And so I turn over another card to see who that person is. Joker. When Joker is uh, the visitor, it's automatically misplayed. So already we have kind of an exceptional situation here. Um, again, there is no Joker here on the team. If it's home, you have a choice of player. But because it's visitor, it means that they've automatically, you know, something happened. The puck was misplayed. Um, the Stampeders defense got it. And so I turn over the fourth card and just ignore it and finish the sequence. So you can see here we're through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. We are five minutes into the period. I start sequence three. I turn over a card. This is a red nine. This time it means it goes to the home team. And nine is Jankowski. I wonder if it's any relation to Marty Jankowski. Anyway, um, 
So Jankowski with the nine, and so when I turn over the next card again, I'm looking at his assist column, him in the assist column. I looked at the assist column first. Ace or seven to ten to see if he can play the puck successfully. He has a six. He has misplayed it. So what I do this time, I turn over two cards because I don't even have to see who has the puck. I turn over two cards. Two and a half more minutes have gone by. And again, you can double check here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve cards or seven and a half minutes have been played uh, in the period. So we go to the fourth sequence now. This time it is a black two. I will actually have to refer to the draw pile. Or no, yes, I will. To the draw pile this time. Uh, sorry, visitor, because it's black. So I look here and it's team. Uh, team. And so in order to find out who actually has the puck, what I do here, I sort of divvy these up. So you're looking at... Um, 13 cards and I have five players so I might I might give him some extra I might say like three 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 and then two and two so three six nine and then we'll say ten and jack and and queen and king that's how I do it um, so I take from the draw pile that is uh, an ace I'm going to count the ace as a one I'm going to say here Fashaway has the puck and again, because he's a team player, I'm looking at ace to six to ten. Team players might be your bench. It's either some guys high in the roster to get them a little extra action and or some bench players that get very little, but they get it on exceptional occasions here. It's a combination of the two. So the second card in the sequence is an ace. An ace is an automatic play, as is a ten. So the puck has been played automatically to ten. 10 is A. Jones for the Portland Buckaroos. So when I look at the fourth card in the sequence, if it's an ace, he scores. If it's a six, or sorry, a five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, he scores. If it's a two, three, or four, he does not. And if it's a face card, I have to check the Stampeders goaltending. And it is a six, so he has scored. I don't have the Uno cards ready, but uh, we will give the Buckaroos green there and say that he has scored. Um, and so again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We are halfway through the period. We have a one nothing game here. The Buckaroos over the Stampeders. With the red 4, it means that, and again, this is the first card in the sequence. We're looking for possession. D. McDonald has the puck here for the red home team, Stampeders. So the next card, I need either an ace or an 8, 9, or 10 for him to be able to make a play. It is a jack. With face cards, I have to look at the team defense. It says I can play on red kings, uh, king, or clubs. And because a jack does not satisfy any of those conditions, it means that the puck has been misplayed and two more cards you know, are turned over. And... Uh, just to elaborate on that a little more, for the team defense, if a lot of information is up here, it probably means that the team is defensively very strong. Uh, this would mean that I can only play the puck successfully if I have a red king or a club, right? So it needs to either be a king of diamonds, a king of hearts, or a king of clubs. If it is a jack, a queen, or even a king of spades, I can't play the puck against this team. This is defensively a pretty strong franchise. Okay. And uh, with that said, um, we're going to have another sequence here. So uh, the first card in the sequence, because again, we are, and you know what? Um, I want to make this instructive. So just to show you, we are 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We are 20 of 32 cards into it. We are 12 and a half minutes of the 20 minute period into the 20 minute period. And I should point out, this is a lot more fun to play through when you're not doing it instructively, when you're actually playing the game. Like once you learn how to play the game, you can really fly through this. Anyway, a black two is the 21st card of 32. Black again goes to the visitor, so... Now what I'm looking at is the visitor team cards. Again, ace or six to ten. Uh, and again, because it's a team, this is an exception. I go to the draw pile for this and then also for assist on a goal. Those would be the two main situations where I would go to this here draw pile of 22. 
I have a five. Again, I said I go three, six, nine, eleven, thirteen. So I'm going to say here that M. Donaldson has the puck this time and looking to play it on either an ace, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. The follow up card is a blackjack. So what I have to do now, it's going to come down not to their ability to maneuver the puck, to someone in scoring position, but to the Stampeders defense to see if they can prevent a scoring chance. They will only allow a scoring chance on kings or red queens. They will not allow one if there is a jack or a black queen played. They have misplayed the puck. I mean, they being the buckaroos have misplayed it. Uh, there are other, there's other terminology that you could use if you wanted to get creative. If you want to do your own play-by-play, -play, I'm going to try to keep it simple and keep it to a strict few uh, words for this. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We are two-thirds of the way or 15 minutes through a period. Uh, so five minutes to go. That is two more sequences here. Uh, so to begin the next sequence, we look, it is a red ace. That means that the Stampeders ace and Johnson here with the puck, and he can play it to somebody in scoring position successfully with either an ace or a four to ten. So the follow-up card is a black king. Now again, for the black king, we have to come over here. The team defense says they will allow a scoring chance uh, either with a red king or a king of clubs, which this is. So they have a scoring chance. I look at the third card in the sequence, because again, this was card one and card two. I look at the third card of four to see who has the scoring chance. It's player 10, Marcetta. Right, so Marcetta here with the, with the scoring chance. And so I'm looking either for an ace, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 to see if Marcetta has scored. If it's a face card, it could come down to the goaltending. And it's a joker. A joker means automatically a goal for the home team. Again, jokers, they don't come up too often, but when they do, they basically mean home ice advantage. They leverage home ice advantage. So we have a one-all game here late in the period. And I'm totally going to play this out because it's been too long. I've only played one game of dog hockey, and that was with someone else in the past. I don't even know how long. In the past little while, anyway. So I'm totally going to play out this game, but I won't play all three periods like this. Um, uh, anyway, we'll see. We'll see how I might. So we're down to the final two and a half minutes here of the period. I turn over the first card. It is a red king. It goes to the home team. And I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. I'm not familiar with this gentleman. Sorry. He's a defenseman, evidently. And pretty good puck-moving defenseman at that, I would say, given that he can play it with an ace or a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. The follow-up card is a red queen. So again, this when a face card comes up, it's going to depend not so much on how well the team can maneuver the puck offensively. A face card is the test of the opposition defense, how well they are able to defend it. Again, they only allow a chance on a red king or a king of clubs. That means defensively they are very strong. You know, If I look at the Stampeders to compare, they allow a scoring chance on all kings and then also red queens as well. So queen of hearts and diamonds. Uh, so with that said, uh, even though he's really good at maneuvering the puck, Portland has come up strong here defensively. And so that we turn over the final two cards because there was no scoring chance generated in that sequence. And there you have it. That's a period. A period is 32 cards. So um, might as well continue with a slow, instructive pace. Maybe what I'll do is go to period three uh, and maybe play out period three at a normal pace. And again, I have not played this game in a while. I'm back in the position where I was when I made the first ever video that I made on this channel for the Game Doc Hockey. So... Um, what I'm trying to say here is that if I can pick it right back up and play it again, it's it's easy to play. <laughs> it is easy to play. I understand with the instructions, there are a couple of different editions of the instructions. I found that a little confusing initially as well. Um, I do think that at least one set of the instructions is written in quite a clear, straightforward manner, but um, it's in the eye of the uh, beholder, right? So uh, what we're going to do now is again we're going to sort these into two piles so 
I have different ways of doing this to make sure that I've shuffled them very well. Sometimes I go 1, 1, all the way up to 22. But for now, we'll keep it real simple. We're going to count out 32, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Okay. And then... I'll even double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I have 32. I have 22. I put the 22 pile sideways just to make things a little easier for me to see, especially when I'm going quickly, right? I, I want to be able to differentiate and distinguish the two piles. So we kick off the second period. The puck is going to go to, again, another name that I just don't know it well enough. I'm not going to... Veg Prava. I said I wasn't going to try to pronounce it, but it looked like it might be fun to try. Anyway, he has possession. I need, I'm need. i looking to either an ace, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten to see if he can get it to somebody over here. A black king. So again, with the face card, that will depend on... Portland's defense. Again, that king of clubs, so they have maneuvered it to someone in scoring position, and that someone is an ace. Jankowski is an ace. He can score in an ace, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Let's see if he's done it. With the six, so we now have a 2-1 game for the Calgary Stampeders. Um, Jankowski has scored. Now, something I did not do in the first period, um, as I begin to lose my voice, Something that I did not do in the opening period was award assist to goals. Sorry about that. I'll try to make a mental note here. I'm about 16 minutes and 20-some seconds into the video. I'll try to timestamp that. So, again, Jankowski has scored. We already know that. To award the first assist, and again, it's so once you know the game, another thing I love about this game, it's, it's actually hard to make a mistake. Once you know the game, because it's, let's say for instance, okay, he scored and I, let's say I forget who had the puck, who passed the puck to him. I look in the sequence, 10, 10 started the sequence. This guy had the puck. He passed it to Jankowski. I will flip for a secondary assist. And for the secondary assist, if Jankowski or this guy comes up, it means it was a one assist goal. Um, sometimes if you get an individual effort, if say Jankowski got it to Jankowski and, and on the assist, Jankowski came up, then maybe it's just a one assist goal. But let's see for a secondary assist. So this is a five of diamonds. Because it's diamonds, I look at D. Right, I look at uh, column D. And for diamonds here, it says ace to six is this guy. So H-U-C-U-L, Hukul or Huckle, however you say it, he has the secondary assist on the goal. Vej Prava has the primary assist. And Jankowski has scored. Sorry, let me again. Huckle has the secondary, Vejprava the primary, and Jankowski has scored the goal. We're two and a half minutes into the second period, and it is 2-1 for the Calgary Stampeders. So we begin another sequence, this time with a blackjack. Blackjack means that Schmatz has the puck. Bobby Schmatz, Schm I wonder if he's related to the Schmatz, Schmooch guy that uh, Al Red Sox fan likes to call. Uh, in games. Bobby Schmatz. Bobby Schmatz. I can't say it now that I'm on the spot and I'm under pressure. Uh, but anyway, he has the puck. And with the Red King, again, face cards. It does come down to the team defense on all kings. They allow a scoring chance. So let's see who has the chance. Player 9. Player 9 is once again Schmatz with an individual effort here. And he scores on an ace or a 6-10. to 10. And with the 4, he is unable to score. So... We begin another sequence because, again, we are now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. We are five minutes into the second period. We begin the third sequence with a black card. It's going to the Black King, A. Jones. Uh, I'll try to pick up speed a little bit here. Um, ace and four to ten in order to play the puck successfully. Ace is automatically going to play it successfully. That's another way once you know the game you can really accelerate. You see an ace, you see a ten. Don't think about it. Just maneuver it. Draw another card. So anyway, he has played the puck. And who was it again? Because I momentarily forgot. The camera does that to me. Jones has played it. Who has it? Player three. Player three here, D. Anderson. He can only score on an ace or a ten. He evidently doesn't get a whole lot of goals. 
and the 4 means that he is not scored. He would need either an ace or a 10. A 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, he's not scoring. If a face card comes up, it's possible that our Edwards there for the Stampeders is flubbed on it, but in this case, it was a 4. So no goal there. Again, we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Notice it's going in multiples of 4. Each sequence has 4 cards. So... With the black five, once again, it will be the Portland Buckaroos with possession off the beginning of the sequence. A defense here, Davidson. I want to say Brendan Davidson, Montreal alumnus. Anyway, uh, not likely. Um, perhaps a relative. Anyway, with the six, he can only play it on an ace, eight, nine, or ten. So with the six, he was not able to find anybody in scoring position. Two more cards come off the pile. Just to double check, just to show four, eight... 12 and 16. So again, another nice, even, clean multiple of four. We are halfway through the hockey game. The score is 2-1 for the Calgary Stampeders. Again, to start the sequence, we have a black card. We look at the visiting team. Lofton with the puck. I look at either an ace or a 4-10. to 10. Or, because it's a face card, it no longer depends on Lofton. It now depends on the Stampeders. Team defense, kings or red queens. Because it's a black queen, the puck has not been played to anyone in scoring position. Two more cards come off the pile. We can look. It should be 20 cards now. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. As tedious as this is, when you're learning to play the game, when you play out your first couple of games at least, it might be helpful just to go through and count and make sure that you're operating in multiples of four. Every sequence is a multiple of four. The first card in the sequence sees... Whether home or visitor has the puck and the number on the card or whatever is on the card, the number or letter will determine who on the home team or the visiting team has the puck. The second card, you refer to the ability to the assist column here to see whether or not that player was able to get the puck to somebody in scoring position. The third card, again, they've already got possession. So the third card, it doesn't matter if it's black or if it's red. That they've already got possession, so the third card, you're just looking to the letter or number to see who has the scoring chance. And then the fourth card, you're going to see whether or not they were able to uh, score a goal based on their ability to score. And again, we're working multiples of four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whoops. <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, twenty. So we are 20 means we're, um, what are we here? 12 and a half minutes through the period. Seven and a half minutes to go here in period two. We get the black ace. The black ace means, again, it's going back to the visitor. So the Buckaroos, even though they're losing, they're behind by a goal. They have had the puck a lot here, it seems like. Goyer this time with the puck. Goyer is a good player. He's an ace for a reason. And he can set up someone in scoring position with an ace. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. So a seven. So he's going to feed the puck to somebody. Who? We don't know yet. This seven is just in his range. So the third card in the sequence is an eight. That tells us that Goyer has the puck. Maybe he was able to chip it off the boards, a chip and chase or chip and charge, or he maneuvered it around the defenseman. Goyer still has the puck, though now he's in scoring position. Individual effort, end to end, however you want to call it. The call is yours. And with this fourth card... If it's an ace, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, he has scored. If it's a face card, we look at the goaltending ability and the opposition to see whether or not the puck has gone in. And if it's uh, um, if it is uh, two, three, four, or five, then it's no goal. And it's a ten. So a ten. Another thing that I like about tens and aces, tens, automatically a goal. Goyer has scored. He has tied the game. It was an individual effort. I'm only going to check to see if there was one assist on the goal. I look here, 10, 10 of clubs, and uh, and they don't always go all the way up to king. Uh, so sometimes, you know, if the team doesn't get as many assists, but I look here, clubs, I look to the C, and for the C10, it says Tessier. I think that's Orville Tessier, actually. I know Tessier played in the league. Yep, that's uh, late Chicago Blackhawks, 1980s coach to be, Orville Tessier, assisting on Goyer's goal. And if you want to know the rough time, there's a way to know the rough time. I keep my simple game, or there's a way to know exact time, I mean. I keep my simple game simple. So I'm going to say again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We are two-thirds of the way, sorry, three-quarters of the way. Sorry if I said two-thirds in the first and I meant three-quarters. We are three-quarters of the way through the first period. And uh, so 15 minutes through up to 20. We have two sequences left. There are eight cards. I'll even show one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoop. Seven, eight, yes, there are eight cards in this pile, and um, who has possession, right? Uh, this time the black nine, so again, it's the buckaroos here, McVeigh with possession. And the red queen, so the red queen again comes over to the Stampeders. I look at their team defense. Kings or red queens will allow a scoring chance. Who has the scoring chance? We are about to find out. Player seven, Kay Lofman has the scoring chance. He can score in an ace, eight, nine, or ten. He has not scored. So again, this is the final sequence, the final two and a half minutes of the period. We get a red two. So finally, after a period where they've the puck has been in their end a lot, they've been outplayed, it's going to be two, which is a team card. Again, for the team cards, I'll, like the assist, I come to the draw pile. That's a red eight. Uh, so only three cards here. So I'm going to say five, four, and four. I'll say six to nine, it's Willis. So Willis here has the puck, ace, or nine to ten. Let's find out what Willis is talking about. Eight. So Willis is unable to play uh, the puck and these two cards. If you're unable to play on the second card of the four sequence, you're just going to turn over these two cards. It's like you're discarding them. So again, we are through 32 cards. We are through the second period of play. Again, I'm going to take them, shuffle them a little bit, maybe not as much as I would normally because it's not really the point of this video. This is more instructive. Uh, hopefully this is a better version of my first ever video of Doc uh, Hockey. Um, so anyway, you do your little mix and shuffle. And again, two piles. The play pile, 32. The draw pile, 22. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. There you have it. And again, if you want to double check, this is a very foolproof, fail-proof game. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I put them sideways. This is a per I don't think you have to. It's just a personal thing. Makes it easier for me, especially when I play it at a normal pace and I'm flying through and cards are flying. Keep these ones sideways. So, 2-2 two, two after 2, right? <laughs> in addition to everything else, this has been a good close game. I like tied in or one goal games in period 3. So to start off the third period, we're starting off with home possession. Player 8 on the Stampeders. Riddall. The second card, 7. To maneuver the puck to someone in scoring position, he needs an A7, 8, 9, or 10. He has a 7. Someone in scoring position has it. Who has it? It's the Stampeders Ace Jankowski, who can score in an Ace, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. So if the next card is any of those, it's a 7. So Jankowski has scored here early in the third period and the first sequence here. So at some point in the first two and a half minutes, I just say two and a half minutes in. I keep it simple. There's a way you can roll the, like a, a couple of dice to get an exact time. I don't bother with that with this game. I'm going to say two and a half minutes into the third. Jankowski has gone up here. Three Has put the Stampeders up here. 3-2. So who has possession? We're starting a brand new sequence. Once again, it's the home team here. Hoekstra. Ace or and an ace or a 6-10 in order to, uh, to uh, play the puck. Where is he? The jack. Right there he is. Okay. That is a king. Because it's a face card and it's not an ace or a number card, i got to look to these guys. Red kings, I can play. This tells you uh, what cards will allow a scoring chance. Red kings will allow a scoring chance. So um, I think before I said if many if many things are up here, it's good, it's good team defense. Again, I've not played it in a while. It's the opposite. You want to have as little here as possible. This is what they will allow a scoring chance on. So they have allowed a scoring chance here. Let's take the third card of the sequence. Again, we should be six cards in. We are. So the third card of the sequence will let us know who. And for the Buckaroos, it's, or sorry, the Stampeders rather, the home team. Again, it's home with possession. Uh, so 
Hoekstra's managed to get the puck to anybody. Joker, home ice advantage, it's my choice. I'm going with Jankowski. He's got the best chance to score. He's a very logical choice. And with the six, Jankowski has scored. So Jankowski puts up a pair here early in period three. What was a 2-2 deadlock game after two periods? Now the Stampeders are up by double there uh, just five minutes into period three. So we take another card again. We're starting a new sequence. That's a black five. Black goes to visitor. B. Davidson this time with the puck again. And hopefully you can really see, as I've been doing this, and I realize it's slow, it's kind of sloggy, uh, the way that I'm playing it out this time as I approach half an hour. You can play like three or four games in half an hour going at a normal pace. But anyway, um, so uh, three, three at least, if not four. Again, it depends how many goals and such. Um, how many misplayed pucks, <laughs> but, uh, Davidson or, uh, yeah, um, sorry. Yeah. Davidson has the puck, right? Car one of the sequence, a or eight to 10 on the follow-up four. He's misplayed it. I discard two cards to bring myself up to a multiple of four. Again, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I am seven and a half minutes into the third period. Each sequence of four is two and a half minutes. Who has possession this time? Three on the visitor. Orville Tessier has possession. He can get somebody set up in scoring position with an ace, eight, nine, or ten. It's a seven. Tessier is not able to get the job done. Two more cards come off the pile. And we draw again at the beginning of the sequence. Again, we should be at 16 now, halfway through. Four, eight, 12, 16. We're halfway through here. Let's see who has possession this time. Red three, with the red three, it's Kosianic. Kosianic with the puck. So an ace, a nine, or a 10 is what he needs to find somebody in scoring position. It is a blackjack. Now with the blackjack, when it's a second card, there is an injury stipulation. I've not played with it in a little while. It is in the rules. I'm going to overlook it here and just say that we go to the team defense. And it's an optional rule anyway. And we'll just say that because again, it's not a red king uh, or a king of clubs. So therefore, unable to uh, to uh, play the puck is Kosianik, or how, however you say his name. So two more cards come off the pile. So again, we should be at 20 cards now. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We are um, uh, 12 and a half minutes through the period. So to bring us up to the 15-minute mark, red nine. This time it's home with possession again. Jankowski, I'm looking. I want an ace, seven, eight, nine, or ten on the next uh, card. And I get a red two. So again, he's not played the puck successfully. Two more cards come off the pile. Now 15 of 20 minutes has gone by in period three. With a black two, this is going to be the visitor, and it's going to be a team card. Again, I'm going to go three, six, nine, 11, 13. That's a personal choice. That's how I do it. So I see this 10 here, so I'm going to look to the fourth name here. It is Davidson, so again, he gets the puck sometimes. Davidson here with the puck again. And for Davidson this time, though, I should point out I don't look here. I look here in the team. Acer, 6 to 10. Davidson actually has a better chance to play it here. 9. Davidson has played it to somebody in scoring position. Uh, they're trying to come back and tie here. They have two chances. Queen means fash away, and look at that. He can score on an ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Either the Stampeders goalie has to make a big stop in a face card, or fash away has scored. <laughs> and with the five, fash away gets the buckaroos back to within one here late, but they will need the puck on the next sequence, or it will sort of kill the drama. So the final sequence here are four cards. If you're a buckaroos fan, you want this to be a black card. Let's see. First card of the sequence is red, so we know the Stampeders have won. Let's play it out anyway. Um, Hoekstra here with the puck. They might actually add an insurance marker late. There could be a wrinkle, actually, for pulling the goaltender that, again, because I've not played it in a while, I'm overlooking for the time being. Let's start basic here. Hoekstra with the puck and uh, being the jack, so I'm looking ace, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. That's a three, so he's misplayed it. Two more cards come off the pile. There you have it. Game over. 4-3 for the Calgary Stampeders is the final score. And I think what I'm going to do, because I love this game, I'm going to come back and play a game. I'm going to put the Stampeders on the road and the Buckaroos at home. We'll call this a home-at-home -home series. I'm going to play a game at a normal pace. I'll, I'll be right back. Bye for now.